All right, welcome to the Bears Hall of Discipline today. We're picking up a Bible study with Bear Paul today in Ephesians chapter 6. So if you have your Biblia Sacra, your Holy Bible, Turn with me, if you please, to Ephesians chapter 6. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right and good. It is good to obey your parents in the Lord. That is for us children that have parents old and that the fact that they were parents we respect them doesn't mean we do everything they tell us if it's not in a right accord because we're not living under their roof anymore but we respect them we honor them if your child living under the roof of a parent, then not only do we respect them, then we obey them in the Lord. If they tell us to do evil and wicked things, then we say no because the Lord takes priority. If they say, I don't want you to, you know, date this person, drive this car, or whatever, then we respect that. And we do the best of our ability to obey that. Yes, sir. No, sir. To the best of our ability. Honor your parent, respect them. Honor thy father and my mo thy mother, my mother, your father, which is the first commandment, and has a promise that it may be well with thee and thou will live long on terra earth. Now to the fathers. Fathers, don't be a hypocrite to your children. If you smoke cigarettes, I'm not telling you I'm for or against smoking cigarettes. I'm just telling you, if you smoke cigarettes and you catch your little son or daughter smoking cigarettes, you have no right to spank them if you're smoking cigarettes, right? So if you tell them, I don't really want you to smoke. I smoke, but I don't really want you to smoke. You can't come down too hard. But if they start bringing home marijuana or whatever from school or from their job or whatever, then you say, nope, that's, that's forbidden in our home. Maybe you give them a warning and say, no more. Next time, you're going to get, you know, whatever disciplinary actions you take as a family. So don't provoke them by telling them not to do something, but then you turn around and do it. So I'm not saying smoking is good or bad, but Bible really doesn't talk about cigarette smoking. Marijuana is kind of a different issue because it's a, it's a pharmacia. It's a, it's a hallucinogen. It's, a, it's, a, it's a something that makes your brains into the spiritual realm somehow. I don't know how, but it does. And that's why teenage kids, they, they get marijuana and they start playing with witchcraft and Ouija boards and tarot cards and, and uh, all that kind of stuff. Because they're kind of married. They're, they're... So when fathers say, I don't want that in my house, son or daughter, then you need to respect that. 
most importantly, unto the Lord. So don't provoke your kids. Be real. If you're doing something and you turn around and tell them, no, you can't do that, then that's, that's hypocritical. Don't be a hypocrite. Be real. Be honest with God. And be, as they say in this life, be transparent. Be, be available and be truthful. Read the Bible to them. Don't tell them to read the Bible and then you don't read the Bible. You read your Bible, Pops. Papa Bear, Mama Bear. Read your Bibles. After you've read your Bibles, then you can read your Bible to the children and tell them, well, now it's not your turn to read your Bible in your bedroom, Susie and Johnny or whatever. Be transparent. I actually kind of like that expression. Be transparent. Be real. Tell it like it is. Servants, be obedient to those that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling and sincerity of heart as unto Christ. Not with eye service and pleasing men. You know, being a little boss's pets when the boss is around be real if you're in a country or a land where there's you know you're almost like slaves but unto the lord you do godly things they ask you to do ungodly things you say no not with eye service or men pleasing but be servants as unto christ doing the will of god from the heart with good will, with a righteous heart, performing that labor as unto the Lord Jesus Christ. And let God get the glory in your job, in your work, in your labors. When you do a good job, let God get the glory. Because we're here to give him the glory. For he's worthy. Jesus is worthy of the glory. We're not. We're just his children his disciples, his followers. Knowing that whatever good thing any man does, the same shall receive of the Lord one day. One day we'll have our reward in heaven because we're going to be with Jesus forever and ever and ever and all of eternity. We're going to see the universe, the planets, the cosmos as never before seen because we're going to see it. We can be there. We'll have our rooms prepared for us in the new Jerusalem as Christians. We're going to be caught up off of this earth before the great tribulation hits. We're going to spend eternity in heaven, in mansions and streets of gold. As God puts wrath upon this earth to the wicked and disobedient, judges the earth for its sin. We're going to be in heaven. Christians, those of you that love Jesus Christ, we're going to be in heaven enjoying eternity when the great tribulation hits this earth. We're not going to be here. Those of you that are living in sin, different story. I won't comment on that right now. But be ready. Like the ten virgins, you never know when he's coming. And why risk it? Be ready. Love Jesus right now. If you're into something messed up, get out. Get out of that messed up relationship. Get out of that dope or that whiskey booze you're taking in or that naughty stuff you're looking at. Get out. Stop it. Stop it. You went down the road of the broke back mountain boys? Get out. Get out of that trash. That's a curse. Get out of that. Repent. Confess your sin and turn to Jesus. Start studying your Bible. Praying, singing to the Lord, serving Jesus Christ. God will break that nasty stuff out of your life. Get out of that trash. Read Romans 1. That help you get out of that trash. Masters, 
be honest, and once again, be transparent before your slaves, your employees. Don't tell them to be on time all the time when you come in late and say, well, I can't be late, I'm a boss. Uh oh. You be on time, they be on time. If they're late, then so what? That's late, that's life. When they're late every day of their life, that's, they can talk about it then. But then you be on time all the time. Okay? Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of Satan. The tricks. He's a tricker. False accusation. Lies. Deceit. He'll attempt you to take your life when you're not looking, when you least expect it. He'll have friends turn against you when you least expect it. That's one of his tricks. Telling lies. Spreading false rumors. False accusations. That's Satan's business. Don't you do that. You be honest and true, Satan. I did it. I didn't do it. Whatever. Another man or woman does a good job, better than you, then let them have the glory. Who cares? Give you glory to Jesus Christ. But Satan, he's tricky. He's a schemer. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, spirits, the, the netherworld, the spiritual dimension, the world which right now Satan and the angels are able to dwell. One day they're going to be cast out of that little spiritual heaven into the earth. They're going to have boots on the earth during the tribulation period. They're going to get kicked out of that heavenly realm, the spiritual realm, not the third heaven, the glorious heaven, but they're, they have access to a spiritual realm right now. One day that's going to end for them. So stay away from all that. Be honest and true. Wherefore, take unto you the full armor and strength of God, that ye may be able to be true to the Lord. People are going to lie about you. Maybe even your own family. They're going to lie. You just stay true to the Lord. Don't worry about them. Stand therefore having your girds girt about with truth and the breastplate of righteousness and your feet laced up with the gospel of peace. Here's a good expression. A good child of God doesn't set out for war, but he must always be ready for it. If you're a man, woman, maybe a single mom, single dad, try to keep your body in shape. If you're in a wheelchair, keep your mind in shape, your choices, your mouth, your ears. Keep your roads straight and narrow. And when the trouble comes bouncing around you, you just keep going on the straight and narrow. You don't need to change anything. You just keep going. In the narrow road unto eternity by faith and repentance in Jesus Christ. Above all, taking the, the armor, the Kevlar of faith. When you're wearing spiritual Kevlar, you don't care about the, the, the M16 rounds from Satan. They try to assassinate you, you're going to make it through. Because your heart has been true to the Lord. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. The M27 of the Spirit. The assault rifle of the spiritual realm. Prayer. Bible. Praying in the spirit. Singing in the spirit. Trusting in the Lord. Repentance. Confession. Obedience. Belief in Jesus Christ the Son unto our Heavenly Father 
and let the Holy Spirit just move through you. Praying always, supplications, supplications, singing praise songs. Then he says, pray for him, that God may encourage him with the right words in a hostile environment. For he is an ambassador in bonds. But that you may know his activities in the Lord, take a kiss his fellow minister, his fellow home church pastor, working with him, helping him out. He sent to them words, letters, encouragement to comfort them. Peace be to the saints in Christ Jesus. Love, faith from God our Father, Yahweh, and Yeshua, our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace Kiros, grace, be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity and truth. When you meet a Christian out in the workplace, man, you just can't help but give them a hug, even if they ain't used to it. Reach out. Give them some love in Jesus Christ. If you need to get your life right before Jesus Christ, do it right now. Do it right now. If you're standing, sitting on an airplane, in a car, in a theater, get your life right with Jesus Christ. Right now. Don't wait. God, forgive me. Forgive me, Jesus. Forgive me, Jesus. Forgive me, Jesus. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and wash me clean. Baptize me in your holy name. In your wonderful name, we pray. Amen. See you next time, brothers and sisters. Amen.